let's go ahead and get started. I think I've got everything in here. Let's do a quick agenda review. Is there anything that you see that you want to change or add that isn't currently in the agenda? Um, I think everyone has arrived after that was posted. If Okay, anything you want to add or change to the agenda? And once, twice. All right, let's move forward then with our first item. So uh, first item is uh, the uh, charter update and placement. Um, nothing from me on that. Um, I was working on some of the other text actually, um, but uh, that will um, be coming soon actually. And uh, oh, um, okay. And beta site, Brian, go ahead and give us an update on the beta site. Okay, <clears throat> there's, I've not actually done any changes since last week. I'm not pushing any changes. Um, I'm being a bit busy this week, but I'm hoping to get the site to a point where at the next full meeting, we can have an, a vote on to put it live or not. So I've been sort of noodling some stuff around on my sort of local repo. So I've not yet pushed anything, but I'm hoping that by next Tuesday, there'll be the content there that we can vote to go live or not. Um, one issue has come up though. <clears throat> um, where should subgroups be represented on the web? Because there's been a, um, an issue raised on the OKD.io git, um, and it looks like the virtualization subgroup have already created their own web presence. Um, yeah, I was a little bit... Uh... <laughs> I, we had talked at the last main meeting about creating a sub-working group, and they just sort of went and ran with it on their own and then created a, a presence. Do we want to ask them to, to reel that into what we have going on here as and, opposed and, to splintering? And, and that's what I was going to say, because I think we need to be consistent. So. We've obviously yeah. got the new virtualization. We've got this document. So where do we where do we want to put our our content and the active to topics that we're doing? And then I'm guessing that we may eventually create one about the operators or um, going forward. I mean, to me, having fewer places is easier to manage. Sending people off across the web, I, I think, just gets over complex, and then. Um, you just don't know how to update it. Also, I'm suggest I'm I'm guessing they're using a different technology, and yeah, um, they haven't actually cool. said how their how that is created. There's no source there. It is a GitHub.io, which is that a, is that a Git wiki? I don't I know what creates it. I think it's a Git wiki. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I think at the next meeting um, we invite the Vert people to come to the Docs meeting and ask them to migrate into the MK Docs thing Let me... and then. Let me reach out to them though now so that they don't do a bunch of work. At, do you know what I mean? And actually say, hey, we'd like to invite you to a meeting and show you what we have. We'd like you to, to move into. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the other side of it. I think there's quite a few of us agreed to join that subgroup and we're not part we of it. We didn't hear anything. <laughs> right. It, they did say something in the text of, if you want to join us, come join us. But it wasn't very, um, yeah. I'll reach out to them uh, yep. probably later today, and uh, I'll um, uh, basically outlay, you know, hey, we want this to be participatory. Could you please use our web interface? We've just moved over to this. It's consistent as opposed to bouncing people around. And then I'll also give them the list of folks that had voiced interest at the last meeting. Um, and I'll send something out to the group that will, um, Ping people again. Diane, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the other thing is that we want to make sure that they record their meetings and upload them to YouTube. So, because that's our way of capturing and being open and transparent without having to do huge amounts of meeting notes and things. 
So, um, yeah, if you want, it, please do send it out. And if, um, cause I bet there are a bunch of them are red hatters. So if you CC me on that and they give you any guff, um, I will. I, guff. I think they just want to get it done and they want to, yeah. you know, so they, the, they jumped at the, the chance. So. The easiest thing in the world is to create a web presence. Um, yeah. you know, and, and that's like the first step everybody tries to do before anything else. And, yeah, and that's just, and we haven't gone really public with using MK docs and, the, the beta side a lot, so that probably was confusing. And anyways, um, so yeah, the sooner we get to the MK docs and get out of beta, Brian, the, the happier everyone will be. As for where in the, the the hierarchy of the MK docs and the pages, this group lands, um, you know, that's... Yeah, well, what, I, what I was going to do is I was going to put at the bottom of the sort of menu working groups, and then each working group will get their own section. And what I'm also doing is thinking of putting a new section on the front page, which says current working groups with, with sort of fast links to their their landing page. So yeah, yeah, perfect. We're going to have three basically because we'll have virtualization, the operator subgroup, um, and actually four CRC subgroup, and also the documentation subgroup. So we've actually got four subgroups now that are coming together. So. It's great. Right. And you this, realize this, this is year. actually the meeting time for the operators subgroup. At the same time? Well, no, no. This 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 actual meeting is during the operators community. Well, start st started out the during the operators working group. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then we and then this exact group with these exact people morphed to the documents group because not much was happening on the operators. Well, well hey, um, there. Of course, the, this was like a year ago. Uh, yeah. Right. I think I think that can, that the real work of the operators um, and the operator framework and the OLM and all that is happening in a, a set in the CNCF now. So, I mean, it's and that's yeah, th that's true too. It'd be nice if it would come back to us. So the oh, team actually you. gave me the contact info for the 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 person who's heading up the project within Red Hat to release that subset into OKD. So yeah. that's oh, going to be something uh, now, that, right. Would it be reasonable that these are all subgroups to the uh, working group? Yes. The OKD working group? Yeah, at least once so in that, which it fits under our umbrella, yeah. Right. I mean, not, not the outside upstream ones, obviously. Sure, but yeah. The, you know, and and yeah. then they could periodically report and things like that. That that was my plan. My plan was probably not at the next meeting, the next main meeting, but the main meeting after that is to start putting into sort of a consent agenda, the actual reports from the subgroups so that those get filed in with the main group. Good. Okay. Super organized. I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else, Brian? On, no. Uh, no okay. Okay, great. Um, delineation of resources for working group and OKD users. That's my suggested text for Google. Uh, it's, I checked with Google. We have to trim a few words off. Um, we can do that. Okay. Um, so I'll take some of the also's, wills, and things like that out and see if I can get it into the. I, it doesn't give me a, a number of character count. Right, you the, just got to keep trying. Yeah. Keep trying. So I'm going to clean it up and I'll do that um, as we speak and then we can look at it and see if it, it fits. Okay, and let me share my screen real quick because I want to show folks what I did for. Um, I'll just do. Uh, oh no, actually, what I want to do is. Okay, so if you go, folks should be seeing my Slack. So if you go here, I did. I don't know if anyone noticed this, but I did change the text on the channels uh, over the weekend. If anyone has an issue with this, let me know. But this is what I came up with. Discussion of OpenShift OKD development. Please refer to OpenShift-users for installation and usage questions slash issues. For OKD-specific help, visit the community-led discussion forum. So there's that. And then on users, uh, I did this. Discussion of OpenShift installation usage questions slash issues. For OKD-specific help, visit the community-led discussion forum. Does that work for folks? Anything does, need that? That's what I'm. I'm trying to trim down. It's a little long. Um, so for the for the dev one. 
So what this is, is, I mean, is it okay on the Slack channels at least? On the Slack channels, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fine, yeah. Okay, so Slack channels, we're good. That's That was one thing I wanted to run past folks because I didn't really check with anyone, I just sort of did it. Um, okay, and then yeah, then for the Google group, uh, Diane, you're gonna trim that down. Uh, name and scope of the install that MD and readme dot md um, discussed at the main meeting all were in favor and again um, for folks that were at the main meeting the dean just said you know yeah I think this is a great idea just make sure you link to the the proper sections in the main site so that people can get to all of this information that's easy enough um, so basically I think we're good Brian to start like moving things over um, to that like uh, you know just start separating things out from install md and readme.md um, and we can point if you want maybe a, a future docs meeting the next docs meeting if we can just walk through, through people through where it got put so that everyone can sort of know and point folks to if it isn't obvious does that seem reasonable yeah so I mean what I was going to do is I was going to do it create a new readme for the okd repo mm -hmm. um I'll, I'll i'll not do a pull request until i'll probably show it at the next meeting um, okay see great. If people are happy um i'll put a link to my my git repo well where, where it'll be so if people want to actually go and review it they can go review it i'll probably put something in the, the google group with all this in so at the meeting people have got links to follow and things um, but the idea is that at the next main meeting, the MK doc site will be what I think we can go live with. Okay. I will have updated the readme in the OKD doc um, of the OKD main repo, referencing the beta site um, um, organization. And then we can also close the next one just to, to save time because that ticket will no longer be valid and we can actually I'll make sure that the new site is fully inclusive and um, passes all the scans, etc. Apart from <clears throat> as we go live, we've got this complex set of actions to do in terms of um, disconnecting the Red Hat hooks to the current build system, renaming the master to main, um, and then moving, obviously promoting the beta to the main branch, and then getting the C name register and the um whoever our provider is getting them to update the the, the pointers to the yeah can we okay. let's write these i out so what do we uh let's go back to um beta site let's uh, Okay, so let's do your uh, tasks. And let's write these out. This way we know that we get it done. So what are the tasks? So it's un unhooking the web hooks that point that link into the current Red Hat build process for OKD.io. Um, there's a couple of web, web hooks in there, and I'm guessing there's some back end stuff to clean up as well. We've then got to rename master to main for the inclusion, inclusive language. Um, we've then got to promote beta to main. And then we've got to whoever is the, the DNS provider for the OKD.io site. Um, we've got to point to the, obviously the GitHub site and then add the C name to the GitHub pages. And anything else? I think that's it. All right, excellent. Cool, thank you, Brian. Something broke here. Yeah, it's me. I'm sorry about that. I'm just. That's all right. I can I can read through it. Okay, there we go. Perfect. 
Uh, inclusive language, okay. Um, so I don't know if other folks have had a chance to look at Michael's document. Um, uh, I was looking at it the other day and to me it has everything we need. Um, I can't think of any changes. Michael labeled it first draft, but I, this is perfect. I, I can't see anything that would change. Has anyone seen anything in this that they would want to change? If not, I say we, we ship it and just put a page up with it in the, in the beta wiki. Yeah, I'll do that. In the beta site, yeah. You'll do that, okay. Great. Michael, is there anything you wanted to add or change about this since it was- No, I don't think so. Thank you for your help on this. This is really awesome. Oh, no problem. We, we, we literally get questions about this. As a matter of fact, we have a ticket um, that came in that was that was needed this information actually, and it's it'll be helpful to, to have it on a page that we can link people to. And, and as so things awesome. change, feel free to let us know, right? And we'll make right. sure it gets updated. You. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What do we have? So create a build doc outline. Um, uh, we're going to hold off on that still. Um, Vadim is out for two to three weeks. Um, he will be back theoretically in October, at which time the site will have moved over. And so we'll be able to, to go with this build doc outline. And um, so we're sort of on hold now, still with that. Uh, upgrade path notifications. Bruce, do you want to talk a little bit about the conversation you had at the main meeting with Vadim about this and, and what your takeaway was? Okay, well, I, I guess my, uh, let's see, my, uh, where is, wait, wait. Okay, good. I'm, I'm gonna stop I'm sharing on. and then Bruce, you can, if you want to share, uh, point to anything or anything. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm just going off the, the meeting minutes there. So, so basically, I had a question for Vadim on what the uh, if the upgrade path did not have success, but it had S's and F's, what that was. And my guess was totally wrong. Uh, it, it turned out that uh, those were just specific tests that had succeeded or failed, which I'd already discovered that you could find by clicking on them, you know, and go through the pages upon pages of what they were. Uh, so I had just been imagining something more than actually was. Um, I don't know, it, it might not hurt to document that. Uh, but uh, I, I think that uh, that actually uncovered a bigger issue, uh, which uh, is that uh, uh, I, I'm not sure that we really know who our audience is. You know, I sort of generalized it uh, tremendously there. Uh, and more specifically, audiences. Uh, one is people that want to use this uh, in production. One is people that are, are using it uh, uh, to see whether or not they want to use uh, OCP in production. Uh, one is sort of hobby people. And um, they have different needs, basically. Uh, so if you're wanting to use it in production, uh, then you are concerned about stable streams that are actually stable. Right. And uh, we've seen that uh, even the FCOS stable stream can wreak havoc on occasion. Uh, so that's not really, in my definition of stable, stable. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, I actually upgraded my test cluster uh, to the latest and greatest and was pleasantly, uh, I, I wouldn't say surprised, but what was, you know, uh, I guess pleasantly observed that it worked. Uh, so I, I've, I've gone to where my uh, underlying assumption is that it's not going to work. And so if, if it's something that I'm, I don't want to take the time to try and uh, debug, then I will skip the updates. Uh, so, so uh, and then related to that, the uh, somebody asked, okay, well, uh, they're requesting the documentation and then Vadim said, oh, well, our documentation is for 4.8 because that's the latest, which is something that we haven't released. 
So it seemed odd that our documentation tracks something that we haven't released. Yeah, and I so I actually have this actually dovetails into the new business section, um, right? And I've I've got a link to that uh, GitHub issue. This is uh, issue eight eighty two, and basically it started out with Vadim. Vadim said, "Oh yeah, so it's in the latest release," and someone said, "Well, I don't see a four point eight release." And I said, well, he means nightlies. And, they, and then they said, well, okay, then you should make that clear. And I, I agree, this, this all sort of dovetails into the same thing as we need to be right. more clear about what's a nightly release, what can it be used for, what's a real release. And that one release page with the tabs and whatnot that's available on that CI server is nice, but if, if you're a user, of OKD or hoping to be a user of OKD, navigating through all of that, I think is probably not the best, right? Right, well, you notice that our documentation goes sort of like one point something and then up through two point something. Yeah. Uh, and then finally we jump to Kubernetes and it goes three point something yeah. up to like 3.11 and then it's latest. Yeah, and we talked uh, at the and, last- and we, all, we, and we also get people that are trying to install 4.4, 4.5, 4.6. Right, right. Yeah, I saw that actually and so it this might morning. Be, Someone's trying to do and So it might be useful to have actually, like we have gone through documentation for all those things, but we sort of never um, separated the documentation by version. Right. And again, I, th I think that's a, the underlying assumption of sort of production versus uh, latest and greatest versus development. And maybe it all tracks back to resources, okay, but uh, I think we're just it's sort, just sort of all into one big mush without clearly delineating the different uh, stakeholders. I, I, and sometimes that I, bites if, us. Yeah, if, Diane, I, if I might ask ask a question of Michael Burke, I think a few meetings back we asked if you could generate the interim um, four point releases so that we didn't have the latest. What was the status on on that getting that done? As far as I understand, we can do that if that's what we want to do. We just need to know exactly what we want to represent up there. So are we, let's take this back to the main group meeting, but my sense is we're probably going to want to go 4.6 and up. Yeah. Right. And, and latest can't be 4.8 because it isn't actually our latest. So I'm, I'm hoping that there's a way to tweak that pull down to make it clear that latest is 4.7 and maybe we follow sort of an FCOS model that 4.8, which we can't release yet, is considered next stream, like an FCOS or something like that, or, or we give it a name hmm. that indicates it's on its way, right? Or you just even call it, instead of latest, call it next. And so you have the latest, which would be 4.7, right. and next would be 4.8, but I don't even know why we would list the, the next, well, anyways. No, I think that that's a valid point, right? So, or we would call it testing or something like that, testing version. Well, are we actually tied in with OCP here? Or can we actually have different versions in OKD? Or are we actually in a published cycle with OpenShift? Because I'm guessing by the time Vadim comes back, 4.9 could be out. That's the thing is, so, what, so because there's one channel uh, basically, for all of the the, uh, awesome. the minor releases, um, it's always been that we sort of have our own release schedule. And this is confusing because actually someone asked a question the other day about that um, new um, security bulletin that came out the other day. And they wanted to know, well, OCP is addressing this, is FCOS, or uh, is OKD addressing this? And we, we actually don't have any information about our addressing of security concerns on anywhere on our website. So anyone that wanted to use OKD for production, they wouldn't know, like, okay, this is, we are incorporating updates that fix this and whatnot, and this incorporates such and such bug fixes and whatever. Um, we aren't beholden to them because we are built off of FCOS and because there's that, that um, underlying issue that's preventing us from doing 4.8, uh, 
Um, we won't be doing 4.8 at least for like another month or something like that at least. So, I mean, like an, an official release. I mean, I, the, the question comes, are we going to skip 4.8 right, and go straight to 4.9 or... But um, I, I also think from a document protection point of view, not just OKD releases, but also the documentation releases, are we tied in with OpenShift, OCP on the doc site? Or can, could we actually have different versions under OKD than OCP has? Yeah, Michael, would it be, would it be possible to have a, like you called them books before, would it be possible to have a different sort of top level that's the same style, but not based off of an OCP like 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, etc. Or is that like too much work in, uh, to do, do you think? Well, but that's My, our numbering, right? right? Like we do use that same numbering. We, and we, even, if you, even if you're getting a beta version, it's mm -hmm. some number, you know, 4.8, uh, right. Vadim started talking about 4.10. Uh, so it seems like it would be handy to have documentation that is tracking whatever you know OCP is doing, which is the basis for ours. So if you were using, if, if you were trying to do like a 4.9 nightly version, it would be nice to have the 4.9 documentation. Now, I mean, you, you could just say, oh, well, I'll just go to OCPs, and fair enough. Yeah. If we want to be a product in our own right, I don't think that sending people to OCP documentation, you know, or, you know. Uh, so, Michael, I guess then the question would be, so the 4.9 documentation, is it OCP 4.9 documentation, is it currently available in a, like a beta form? Uh, it is available, but not publicly available. Okay, it's not publicly available yet. Yeah. So, Michael, in, in the OCP documentation, where do they, for security updates, where does that, the, do you pull that in or do you just link back out to the security section of the Red Hat page or patches? Is there? Sim would be in the release notes. Yeah. yeah, they don't actually, they include it only in release notes. It doesn't get put yeah. into, like, the 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 booklets, as Michael was calling them, that are part of like the installation yeah. and maintenance docs. That doesn't contain any like timely update information generally. No, that's all. Awesome. And does that surface anywhere in the OKD release notes? That the security oh. stuff doesn't. No, no. we've oh, never so, no. like taken stuff. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. So. so so I'm not well, sure what the group is landing on here. It sounds like we ought to have some, I, I'm on a, I hate to keep creating readme.md pages and things like that, but like some notation about how this scenario plays out, um, I'm like a short write-up on that um, and where to go to get more information because we are reliant yeah. on the OCP patches. There is a what's new section in the documentation. Yeah. So. They might so be even just, uh, what's new is not quite the same thing as security, um, yeah. it, semantically, I think. Um, well, what is, so what is under the what's new section now in the beta site? Uh, let me go to that link again. I always have to look for the link because I, for some reason, it, I, it, I don't have it memorized yet. So let's see. It's in the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, can you put it in the meeting docs so that it always gets copied when I copy over the meeting docs for some reason? The new site. Okay, so okay, so this is the old right. So this is the new features. This is basically version to version stuff, right? So this is basically like uh, what's different between. And here, let's share. Let me share my screen so that you see this. Um, this is basically stuff like, oh, what's new from version four or five to four six and stuff like that, I think. Or is this like four versus three? I think yeah, it's four, four versus, versus three. three. Yeah. Is it? I know I haven't updated it. Yeah. For version. So, Michael, do you have the history of how it just became like OKD four, like a generic? Um, 
maybe you don't know the history, but sort of how we ended up moving away from like OKD individual sort of, you know, 4.6, 4.7, et cetera, et cetera. So that it just like, because one of the things that someone asked, I guess I should rephrase this. One of the things that someone asked is that, um, you know, there is no 4.6, 4.7 individual documentation. And if we go here to documentation, it's not in the pull down. And you said you can add it and generate it. Do you know the history of why it it stopped at version four and just jumped to being was, the latest all the time? I was yeah. told, quote, because that is what was agreed upon when we came out with version four of OCP. Okay. Yeah. That's probably and I didn't um, pursue it, but yeah. I, I don't think Dean. there's much yeah. Michael, I don't I think it's probably more on me not insisting on it and not realizing the implications. Um Back, back, way back when, and for that, and just being grateful to get any documentation <laughs> auto generated at that moment in time. Yes, so yes. I'm sure it wasn't laziness or um, not wanting to. I think it was just me not knowing exactly what to request. Um, and then, you know, until now, yeah. nobody really asking about it. Um, well, it could also it was be quite a lag. It was, it was about a, it, it was about a year before between the time that OCP came out, and uh, we actually okay. got a release version of OKD. Yeah. And, and uh, what was our was it four point five or four point four? I you know I, I don't I remember. For, which I was forget that. what the first one was, but it, what we should probably do is go back to whatever the first one was and figure out what that was and have all of right. them listed. For yeah, I think that would be I think that would be useful. Only... Yeah, I think we definitely want to do that, especially if it's easy. Okay. Okay. Because like the one thing that's it's always kind of we could revisit it, but okay. Because one thing that's always kind of annoyed me is if I do a a web search for a particular topic, okay. I'll get the link for like four point three of OCP, you know, or four point one, and then you get that big red text that says, you know, this is not the most current documentation. For some reason, that annoys me. I think only because it ends up being rising to the top in terms of web searches. So that's that's my only concern is that if the old documentation is always rising to the surface, that could be problematic. But yeah, so are we saying we? Oh, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, I was going to say you get that with um, oh, the OCP documentation. Whenever I Google, I always end up with a, a an old version of it, and I have to go and click the latest version and says this page isn't available. I'm going to show you this is what OCP have. So this is their drop down. I'm not sure why this hasn't occurred to me before, but um, the uh, organizational plan within Red Hat is a docs.openshift.com website is going away. Oh. And we all done through our customer portal. I'm not sure what that means, OKD docs. So, well, Can you find out? <laughs> I think the, yeah. the, doc, the OpenShift docs aren't going to change their URL. Is that what you're in? So docs.openshift. My name is docs.openshift. Yeah. That I. Docs.openshift.com is going to. Go away? Re, go away or at least redirect. Yeah, I think it's a redirect. So, um, but it's still going to be generated and going to be publicly available. It's not going to be behind a firewall. So, as long as ours keeps going to doc from the same batch, the output goes to docs.okd.io. I don't think that does anything to us. Is the technology behind the docs generation changing, or this is yeah. just a? It is okay. Yeah. Okay. Really. <laughs> Really? Again. And so what is this? Can you find out what the impact will be on this auto generation between uh, whatever the new system will be and OKD? We're going to want to find that. Yes, I can do that. OK, awesome. so maybe Thank you. add that to the agenda for the next docs meeting. Because um, yes. that's really, that's, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. So are we saying that we do want to go all the way back for OKD 3.11, 3.10, 3.9, and and have all of those regenerated? Or do we want to just focus on what's 
I wouldn't realistically going to be supported anytime. Well, I would just say how, the how ones we got, that we released in the, uh, in, the, in the four slot. Uh, have, we got um, any, have we got any users? I seem to recall on the forum that there's been a couple of posts where people said they're still running three dot. Yeah, there are still users out there of the three dots. In which case, we need, to, we need to keep the documents available for them. And yeah, and you, you can't change them on them at this point in time. So you can't like regen with the shortened version. That would just drive people to terrorist mode um, or me. Um, so I, I, I think we need to keep all the three dot X up to the latest, but drop all the ones and the twos, which is what which is what Red Hat OpenShift has done. That yeah. seems reasonable. Yeah. I go with that theory. Michael, what are your thoughts on that as the documentation expert? That seem legit, have three, uh, 3x and 4x, but drop the two and the one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're, mu you're muted, Michael. Now, you know the users better than I do, so. Yeah, there, there are no one dots left yeah. anywhere in the universe. Might have we start with one. three six. Yeah. yeah. So I would say yeah, if you could start with three, then that would be great. So three six and then up. Yeah. Do that, I guess. And do we have a time because that will affect the beta links. If it's going uh, to happen, if it's going to happen quickly, then I'll I'll get it good for launch. If not, when it changes, I'll change the docs. <laughs> okay, I will look into that too. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to pause. I'm going to turn my camera off because I'm I'm in another meeting at the same time and I have to talk now. So okay, um, all right. But I'm keeping recording. Keep going. Okay, so there's that. We talked about that. Um, and noting release version in the docs, we'll also want to figure out a page that better describes nightly. So this is something that we're going to have to write ourselves or have Vadim write or something like that and incorporate it into the website. Um, and so that should explain the Nightly's process and that, you know, Nightly's are, uh, you know, uh, pruned after 72 hours and basically better explain Nightly's so that people understand what they are really, you know. Um, and so if someone wants to take on that task, um, that would be helpful. I, I think we need to recruit a couple more docs group people. Maybe we'll send something out and say something at the main meeting and I'll send something out over the email list. If we could have one more person to volunteer time for docs, so particularly docs that we need written new docs, that would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we did tend to have an extra couple that seems to have dropped off in the last three or four meetings. Yeah. I'll reach out to them and, and see if they, they want to rejoin us and we'll yeah, send something. At one point, Diane was promising us, promising us hordes of uh, newbies. Right. <laughs> That's right. Because there were supposed to be, there was this horde of new Red Hat employees that were like, they were supposed to like, you know, uh, uh, basically start out here to, to get their wings. Like be tempered. Right. Uh, either they ran off or they did so well that they've moved on to the OCP stuff. I don't know. Um, okay, so let's put that as a task item. Uh, I'll take care of that. I'll reach out to the people that used to be here, and then we'll also send, I'll send something out over the mailing list, um, the Google group, to uh, try to round up more people for the docs stuff. If we could have one more person who actually writes new docs, that would be fantastic. Um, so this one came up that's interesting is that um, change logs are missing. Uh, and so if you were to go to, uh, oh, I need to share my screen again. Okay, so change logs are missing. So if we were to go here and, um, you know, these are the, index of releases, if you go to 4.7 stable, even the one from the other day, you get this error and it says could not load, and this is Vadim's repo, right? And the funny thing is, if you go to Vadim's repo, uh, 
there's like no commits here uh beyond like february 17th so i'm i'm confused as to what's happening and vadim is off for a couple of weeks and drop down the branch i think the bills are now done in branches is he doing oh okay so four seven uh yeah it's kind of hard to tell which one it would be is it for four Seven Narbac V one Devel. I can search right by commit. Um, Use a new feature. Just hit a hit hit period. Oh, where 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 here? Just on that page. Just hit period. Oh. And now you can search. <laughs> Oh, up top here. Is that it? Or really? No, on the left hand thing. You, you, this oh, is effectively right. um, oh. called Ready Workspaces. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I was not able to find it when I searched for it. So, this is an issue for all builds. We won't be able to do anything about it until Vadim gets back, but if you hear anyone mention this, it does stop at, I think it's 325. Yeah, is the first one where it fails. Uh, to, uh, February 14th works. So everything after February 14th fails. I'm assuming it's not branch related because these are all the same branches, basically. It's all off the same branch, I think, that gets sent to CI. So. Um, We'll have to find that out, sort of what the deal is with that. Um, the other one that came up is related to, and I hadn't visited this in years, um, there is a, a documentation error where in the OKD docs, um, there's a link that's supposed to grab some YAML uh, files for uh, Ansible, some basically some Ansible playbooks to install. Um, uh, the Red Hat uh, virtualization, and those failed. Uh, there is a ticket that was opened for OpenShift docs, Michael, at 36617 that someone opened up. And so we will want to fix this. Apparently the issue is that the its particular release versions are accessible, but not just like release four or version four or anything like that. Like here it's release four. And apparently that will fail now. It might have in the past. And it actually needs to reference the um, minor version. So Michael, you have some work cut out for you there on that one. And this is, I'm not sure how, oh, he did put OKD only in the, in the subject for that. I mean, th uh, that also raises an interesting question. Should we be linking to Rev or Overt, the upstream free community version? Not if we're talking about, so, I think that this is problematic for a couple reasons. Um, let's have a, this discussion at the main meeting. Let's put, let's earmark this for the main meeting because ultimately this is also a technical discussion, particularly as we start talking about um, Kubert and stuff like that. And, um, I, I, and, and actually, I, I noticed actually that uh, Sandro chimed in on this conversation. So let's bookmark this for the main meeting. I'll put that as an agenda item. I think that's a great question question, Brian, um, and something that we, we definitely should resolve, particularly if we're talking about this this shift. And I, but um, I am looking at the documentation, and it, the menu does say overt. <clears throat> so where where is the link that says rev? OK, the installing. Oh, so it does actually say over at the top, not rev. Yeah. 
All right. So yes, we will earmark that for uh, the next main meeting. I think that'll be a great conversation. And we can get you know Sandro and other folks uh, involved in that as well. And I'll mention that in my. Um, what's the other one that we had here? There was one more. Uh, oh yeah. So um, Diane did get us another office hours during KubeCon North America. This is going to be another live stream. So 10:13. 2 to 2.30 PST, uh, which is, you know, 5 to 5.30 Eastern. And um, uh, I don't think we've picked a topic yet or if, or if we'll just riff on questions that we get. Does anyone in this group have any suggestions for like a, an area of focus or anything like that? Um, there was mention that the um, ARM version may be available by that time, but there's no guarantees. So that might be something that we sort of riff on, but. But it, on version of what? Uh, so the ARM version of OpenShift and by proxy OKD. Because I'm so, guessing <clears throat> Vadim's gonna have to create a new installer. He, he will. Now how fast he does that, I, I don't know. And this is so, this is going to be brought up at the main meeting. I'll bring it up here because it should come up at the main meeting. Um, I'm going to propose at the next main meeting that we get multiple working group people, CI access to do builds so that the Deem is not the only point person for OKD. I realize it's his baby and, and maybe the, the larger group will, will disagree with me on this, but I'm going to propose that we at least have one other person or ideally two other people that are point people for building OKD. So like, for example, he's gone, but he said he would still do the builds uh, the next two weeks or three weeks since it's automated and not Mickley does it. Um, that's cool, but like, what if Vadim wins the lot lottery or, you know, um, you know, I, and it's just, I think it would help to have multiple people familiar with the build process. And, and Brian, this goes back to, sort of the discussion of, of documentation on. Um, oh, so do, do, do we know, are there any Red Hat resources involved in this? <clears throat> or is it purely within Vadim's home at the minute? If there is some Red Hat resources, which is the CI, uh, is a Red Hat CI that uses CentOS. Well, this has probably uh, got to be yeah. Red Hat as then. Uh, yeah, I maybe, I don't know if there's a way and if well, it is, it's <laughs> problematic, and maybe we need to come up with a separate CI, right? Well, because... I would imagine that you'd need access to the Red Hat intranet to get access to the machines. So it's, it's probably, it probably has got to be Red Hatters. Yeah, I, well, yeah, and Diane might have more info on this, but it seems like, if, and even if it has to be more Red Hat people, more at least more people, because right now it's literally just Vadim. And if we really want to take OKD, to the world as a solution for production that can't rest on a single individual. I, I just don't think that that's uh, is. Uh... Yeah, I, I agree with you, Jamie. And one of the things that keeps coming up uh, is uh, being able to uh, build OKD from scratch outside of the Red Hat environment. And uh, the sticking point often seems to be the machine config operator, uh, according to Vadim. Uh, so that's that's been a long-standing, I guess, ask, and that sort of relates to what you're you're doing. Even if, uh, like, if people could build it themselves, um, then you'd have sort of more survivability, even if they couldn't build official versions. Right. Right. And I did uh, toy with the idea of setting up a CI for, um, I, I probably will in the next week or so, because we've been getting a lot of questions on single node OKD. And it seems to me that single node, uh, a CI that tests single node would be a really great idea because we kind of got caught with our pants down. Vadim was <laughs> convinced that single node worked and it actually doesn't like four six four or four seven. and it looks like a version of 4.8, it's broken as well. Um, I, I actually think, <clears throat> sorry, yeah, Jamie. Go ahead, Brent. No, go ahead. 
I just I actually think we need to actually review the the whole point of automation and testing because obviously we've got the CRC group as well, um, and we we need to automate that, <clears throat> um, and then several times Vadim has sort of alluded to a lot of the instability is because we don't have sufficient test capability within the current process. So it is something that if we, as we move forward, I think we're going to have to look at across the board for all versions and all platforms of OKD plus um, the CRC. Yeah, I think the CRC pretty much covers you on the single node because 90% of the work of doing CRC is building a single node. And then, and then you scrape it down, you delete some operators, and then you uh, package it. But it's, it's a very different process to the OpenShift installer, isn't it? Because that was oh, yes, the free yes. 4.8 SNO version, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, 4.8 4 was supposed to solve the problem uh, because it was a feature in 4.8 uh, single node. Um, but the installer version does, it didn't work for someone uh the other day and uh, but i was able to get it to work so i don't i don't know that might have been um a configuration issue on their end and this was in aws uh ipi right uh, yeah but i think i think we need to put, we need uh, to put brian and then bruce yeah i was gonna say we need to put this on the um the agenda for the next full meeting um because obviously there's documentation to be done then there's the whole ci infrastructure question and um, getting more people support but also extending it with the new use cases um, and then potentially we need to get Vadim's git repo to, into somewhere a bit more official yeah yeah agreed so I will add that to the agenda for the next meeting I think that's very important uh, in terms of survivability of, of the project and also um, you know being able to pub publicize the, the the project and and being able to have confidence that when we say to people that something works, a, a relative level, a relatively high level of confidence that something does work, like single node installs or you know or whatever, right? So okay, that will go on the next agenda for sure. Um, we mentioned the OKD office hour. Uh, here's the SIG stuff. So as we talked about, um, I will. Uh, email them and ask them to move their stuff into the web. So Brian, I'll CC you and I'll, I'll also CC Diane on that. Um, uh, just to say, hey, you know, we have this new web system. We'd prefer that it stay within this. And also here are the working group members. Um, and uh, hopefully that that will just go smoothly. And then Brian, you can show them uh, next steps. Yeah, I was going to say if you can send that note tomorrow, I'll make sure that tonight I actually get the landing place in the beta site. Okay. So you could then put a link in. Perfect. That would be awesome. Um, and what was the other thing? I thought I had one more thing that I wanted to mention. Oh, I, now I remember. Uh, Twitter, we need a Twitter account. This came up like right when I joined the group, uh, you know, a year and a half ago or whatever it was, or a year ago. We need a Twitter because so much, so much promotion is done on Twitter. And when we get a new release, no one really knows about it because we're not like, oh, OKD, you know, 4.7, uh, you know, September 21st version came out. Check it out. New features, bug fixes. We don't do anything like that. We don't promote ourselves. And I feel like that's something that would be really um, beneficial to people, uh, to us increasing adoption and also getting people using it so that it gets tested and it gets improved as well. So any, anyone have any thoughts on that? Well, currently we point, the bottom of our documentation points to the OpenShift Twitter account. Yeah. Which never includes any OKD stuff. Never has. Never. I predict never will. Right? Because they have that sort of interest in having open shift. So we'll have to ask Diane. But I'm sure there's some sort of branding type thing, you know. But if we could just do like OKD Kubernetes or something like that, like you know and just get a one of the newbies or something or a couple newbies or some of us 
to, to staff it, right, and to send stuff out, I think that would be really, really awesome. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, if you could, if you could also get, uh, which I know Diane, I think has been working on. If you could also get some of the uh, uh, all of the, uh, the the people who are doing OpenShift demos, um, if if maybe a tenth of them would be on OKD, that would probably be helpful too. Right. Yeah. You know, like have Edison do an OKD demo. You know, in uh, like you know, his script wouldn't have to change. Right. Okay, I think that's the agenda. We have like 30 seconds left, so let's go ahead and call it. Um, see you all. Uh, everyone here except for Michael is at the main meeting. Yeah, and, Jimmy, uh, I was just going to ask one other thing. Yeah. If we do Twitter, do we want to do Facebook? Because again, we point to the Red Hat OpenShift right. Facebook. I I've, I've, uh, I think yes. Anyone have a disagreement with that? Anyone think it would be a bad idea to to have an OKD Facebook? I, I guess the only issue is if we have these things, we've got to do something with them. <laughs> right. That's that's absolutely, and that's where the uh, the the newbies come in, and and us seasoned professionals who have some social media experience. Um, and we can also automate some stuff, right? So if there's a a post that goes to, if there's a commit, you can do things where like a commit made to a repo then calls the Twitter API to make a Twitter post um, that, you know, has that information. So we could look at doing that as well. At so least as as it's it's to, to a spam feed because of that, and then everyone will leave. <laughs> sure, absolutely, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, stop it there. And thank you, Diane, for offering us this, this great uh, conversational opportunity to make OKD better. All right, perfect. Um, I will stop the recording. Jamie, if you have a few more minutes, um, I just want to catch up and then um, we'll go on from there. And I'm